I shall raise up for myself a faithful priest who will act in accord with my heart and my mind, says the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we're celebrating a requiem mass for the repose of the soul of Tony Molini. Tony was a parishioner here at St Vincent's for many, many years, ever since marrying his wife Pam back at the old church on Ruley Moor Road. His faith was important to him. He was a regular attender at mass, And even after lockdown, he was one of our YouTube viewers. We pray for him now that at the end of his life, he may now receive life and joy from the Lord, whose own death and resurrection has opened for us that path to eternal life. We pray for all Tony's family, for his wife Pam, for his three daughters, for his grandchildren, for other members of his family, friends and neighbours and fellow parishioners, who've known Tony and have shared the journey of this earthly life with him. I'd just like to read some words that his daughter has written for his funeral later today. My dad was the youngest of five children. He had four older sisters and three daughters. I will always remember that Faith and St Vincent's Church played a big part of my dad's life, and he'd always been part of St Vincent de Paul's parish. He was married to my mum Pamela for 57 years and they had known each other for 60 years. My dad was a brilliant dancer and singer. His voice never changed even though he was 89 years old. In his younger years he enjoyed watching the Busby Babes and liked to sing the Manchester United Calypso song. When I was a teenager we both went to watch Rochdale Football Club to which he remained a true fan for all time. He was a kind and straight talking man, was much loved by everyone and was a well-known character in Rochdale. He was a loving husband, father, and grandfather. He didn't suffer fools gladly, and was a great support to all who knew him, especially to family and friends. You will be sorely missed. In our Mass today, as well as asking the Lord to give the gift of eternal life to Tony, we also pray for his family and friends, and all who knew him, that they may receive gifts of comfort and strength to help them through this time and the journey ahead until we believe all our paths are brought together in God's kingdom. Today in the Catholic Church we're also celebrating the feast of Saint Martin of Tours. He was a very distinctive saint, the first person really to be honoured as a saint who hadn't died a martyr's death. His is a great story of conversion. He was a Roman soldier until he found and embraced Christianity. Perhaps the most famous story about St. Martin dates from that time. It's said that once, as a soldier, on horseback, he was riding along and saw a poor man at the side of the road who asked him for help. And it's said that St. Martin took the great heavy cloak off his back, pulled out his sword, sliced the cloak in two, gave half to the poor man, kept the other half, and went on his way. He eventually, after becoming a Christian, founded a monastery, and from there was named Bishop of the French city of Tours. He became a great pastoral bishop, visiting his people, confirming them in their faith and helping them on that journey. And as I said, after his death, though he didn't die as a martyr, he was honoured as a saint, one of the very first so to be honoured who hadn't been a martyr. St Martin is an invitation for us to think about several things, our own vocation in life, our own journey of faith, our own lives of charity and generosity, and also for that sense of faith in the church, that charity, that humility, that service may be our watchword. So may St. Martin, from his place in heaven, help, guide, and protect us now and always. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries with these and our own intentions today, we first call to mind our sins and ask for forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Anthony, whom you have called to journey to you. And since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Remind your people that it is their duty to be obedient to the officials and representatives of the government, to be ready to do good at every opportunity, not to go slandering other people or picking quarrels, but to be courteous and always polite to all kinds of people. Remember, there was a time when we too were ignorant, disobedient, and misled and enslaved by different passions and luxuries. We lived then in wickedness and ill will, hating each other and hateful ourselves. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour for mankind were revealed, it was not because he was concerned with any righteous actions we might have done ourselves. It was for no reason except his own compassion that he saved us by means of the cleansing water of rebirth and by renewing us with the Holy Spirit which he so generously poured over us through Jesus Christ our Saviour. He did this so that we should be justified by his grace to become heirs looking forward to inheriting eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Through the good news, God called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered one of the villages, ten lepers came to meet him. They stood some way off and called to him, Jesus, Master, Take pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. Now as they were going away, they were cleansed. Finding himself cured, one of them turned back, praising God at the top of his voice, and threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. This man was a Samaritan. This made Jesus say, We're not all ten made clean. The other nine, where are they? It seems that no one has come back to give praise to God except this foreigner. And he said to the man, stand up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
That's a very famous gospel passage. And while there's a first and obvious message as well, thankfulness, gratitude for the things that God does for us, there's also another message, the message of faith. Notice at the end of the gospel, Jesus actually talks about the faith of the man who comes back and thanks him. Faith is not a matter of just saying the right words, which all ten lepers do. Jesus, Master, take pity on us. That faith is revealed when even when things are as we want them to be, we turn back to God in gratitude, in thanksgiving. We let God be part of our journey. That, of course, is what St. Paul is trying to advise Titus, this young new bishop, in his letter. And he talks about it in very practical terms, about the ordinary ways in which we must get on with life, obeying the civil authorities, doing good whenever we can, not slandering other people or picking quarrels, a huge list of ordinary things. And he talks about this as being our way into the salvation that Jesus has won for us. Our faith, expressed in ordinary life, leads to salvation. Today, as we celebrate this Mass for Tony Molini, we give thanks that he was able to do that. In ordinary ways, he was able to express that faith. As I say, he was a big part of this parish all through his life, a very faithful member of our community here. And so we here at St Vincent's offer our gratitude to all that he was able to do to help us in what we are meant to be. His family too will know of his goodness and his kindness and his generosity, all those characters which make him so much missed at this moment. We pray for them too, that they may receive gifts of comfort and hope. But as we do all of this, we must reinforce our own faith in the promise of Jesus. And this is what St. Paul said at the end of our first reading today. He talked about the kindness and love of God our Saviour for us. This kindness and love is revealed in this gift of salvation, in this gift of eternal life, in Jesus' promise to all of us. We receive that through the sacraments. St. Paul talks about the cleansing water of rebirth and the Holy Spirit poured over us through Jesus Christ. But obviously, our inheriting the promise is not just a matter of saying the right words. It's about living out that faith. It's about living out the kindness and love of God in our own kindness and love. Those things which God has given us, we are asked to share with others. So, as we pray for Tony and for his family, as we pray for all our deceased brothers and sisters in this month of November, as we all think of our own journey towards heaven, let us pray that in the most ordinary things of everyday life, we may show that we understand the kindness and love of God for us and that by lives of faith, of goodness, of kindness, we show our gratitude to the God who gives us so much. So let's think of the prayers that we bring to the Lord at our Mass today. First, we pray for our brother Tony, that he who is given the promise of eternal life in baptism, who ate and drank at the banquet of the Lord's Supper, may now be welcomed to the table of God's children in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the members of Tony's family, for his friends and for all who mourn for him that they may receive comfort from the Lord Jesus, who himself wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us each think of our own prayers and intentions for Mass today. We ask for Mary's prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most loving Father, who give us the promise of eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus, your Son, grant that Tony and all our departed brothers and sisters may find the joy of life in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Antony, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, so that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Anthony Joseph, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brethren, you did it for me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Anthony may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordia, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamos, ex omnes filii have, a te suspiramos, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, Ad nos converte. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, o pia, o Dulcis Virgo Maria.